Hello everyone and welcome to another Good Game Empire video. Today I will be explaining to you how the new Khan invasion uh, works basically which was added um, between March and April of 2022. Uh, so we will be talking about this uh, addition to the Nomad invasion event. So I'll begin with uh, explaining how difficulty levels um, influence the strength of the Khan attacks and the Khan camp. So basically Khan camp is dependent same as nomad camps, which I made video about before. So you can go back to the video if you didn't watch it. Uh, it will be very useful for you to, to get in touch with this nomad invasion. But um, basically the Khan camp, which you are attacking, uh, will be stronger, as you can see there, defensive. So this, uh, this shows you the parameters of Castellan and basically of the defense of the enemy, so of the Khan camp, yeah? Uh, but the most important thing there in the Khan invasion is offensive, which means the offense of the Khan. Yeah, so the Khan attacking us. So this Khan um, invasion is described there and we can see the um, parameters of their commander actually. So this is what the commander will have, the re reduction of wall, gate and moat, as well as strength of melee and uh, ranged, strength in, at, of attack in courtyard, and we also have front unit attack strength and flank unit attack strength. So I'm assuming that this is not increasing the amount of units which players usually have in commanders, but this is rather increasing the strength of units both on the sides and on the front. So it's just a, another bonus to their strength. And as you can see where we when we uh, switch these difficulty levels to higher, we'll see that these numbers grow. So um, we go higher and those numbers grow. Um, as you can see, this is not too scary. Maybe on intermediate plus, you will see something similar to some old red commanders, like 90 ranged and melee or something, and 100 reduction of everything. But still, the courtyard attack strength, which is the most important to us, is relatively low. So still at intermediate plus, it's very easy to defend. It all starts like between hard and hard plus. You can see that it goes up to 40% there in the courtyard, uh, up to 100% million ranged. Um, and on hard plus, it's yeah, it's, it's above 100 million ranged and it's 40 to 50 courtyard. Uh, so this is already pretty strong, uh, but you know, a good choice. I will explain later which of those difficult levels are the best choice to, for you. And on expert, um, you can see that it's already up to 70 courtyard nearly 70 expert plus it's up to 80 on master we have 90 courtyard the courtyard is basically the most important parameter yeah i mean also melee and uh, ranged of course they are also important as well as those uh but the courtyard is uh, basically the most important um, unless you have very limited number of troops on the wall but i will be explaining this later too uh and the last um arc master difficulty level this is actually a hard level to to compete against the Khan attacks uh, because they are way bigger. So basically I will in a second show you a table where you will be able to see uh, the number of units in particular attacks uh, of Khan invasion, of Khan camp. So it sends you attacks which, uh, which size is way bigger depending on your difficulty level. So it will be, for example, 1000 units there in the attack on your castle but 30,000 units there in the Arc Master difficulty level. So the range is very, very uh, huge there. And let me just show you the this table, which summarizes this very well. All right, so now you know uh, how those difficulty levels affect the um, all, all the parameters of Khan event. Uh, so now I will explain, because, you know, first of all, you need to choose the right difficulty level, yeah? Uh, and after this, <laughs> you actually get to get a chance to play the event. So I will now explain uh, the basics of this event. So the Khan uh, Revenge is part of the Nomad Invasion event. It's like an addition to that event, to the Nomad Invasion. Uh, and the basic rules are that you have a Khan camp. This is one camp for the whole alliance. And it's always located next to your um, alliance um, leader. 
so we will find it there. It's very um, you know handy to add it to an alliance bookmark as well as your private bookmarks, so it will make it easier. If you want to have it at the top, like just put a exclamation mark uh, can, and it's gonna be at the top um, of your list here. And you have to attack this camp, uh, and for attacking this camp, you will get rage points, and you need to collect enough rage points to provoke an attack on you. So the Khan camp will make an attack on your castle after you earn enough rage and provoke it. So first of all, how to attack this Khan camp and basically uh, what kind of camp is this? So this is very similar to nomad camp, except that it is um, way more difficult than nomad camps. I mean, maybe not way more, but it has um, double or triple the amount of defenders compared to normal uh, nomad camps. So as you can see there, it's around 10 to 11,000 defenders there. But the normal, you know, the strategy of the attack is uh, basically the same as for nomad cast, as for nomad camps, and I will show it to you in a second. Just for now, I want to explain the whole idea of uh, Khan invasion. So when you make attacks on this camp, uh, you of course need to skip it with the time skips. Um, the you know the cooldown time will vary because the first attacks will have a cooldown of 5 10 15 minutes but the last attacks will make cooldown of 24 hours and it will stay on 24 hours so you need to have some 24 hours skips uh, in order in order to play um you know um a lot of attacks in this event so this is how you attack the camp um, and you need to attack it a few times uh, to collect enough rage to provoke the attack on it, uh, on you, sorry. And when you provoke the attack on your castle, the Khan camp will send, as you can see there, uh, you can see the rage level, so you get this rage for attacking. And if you get enough, you can press this button to provoke the uh, attack on you. Also to note that um, there are rewards, the list of rewards isn't too impressing, but for getting higher Khan camp levels, you will earn uh, a few Khan medals after the event ends, basically. Mm, so you need to at attack the Khan camp at least once to qualify for those rewards. And they, they are based on uh, which level your alliance managed to get by the end of the event. Yeah? And the level of the Khan camp is also very important to note there. Uh, the maximum level is 120 and the minimum is 105. So higher the level, uh, higher the numbers of rage um, earned in the attacks and in the defense and to uh, required to provoke. So when you are defending the attack of Khan on your castle, you are also um, getting some range. I will show you for example uh, here in some reports from my alliance mate. As you can see, uh, this is the report where uh, he was defending the Khan uh, attack on him. As you can see, we've got some rage points there for the defense. Uh, and we've got Khan medals as the reward for defending. So Khan medals are um, only like the only way to earn them is to defend against uh, Khan attacks. And rage, as I said, you can get in by attacking, and you will also get by defending. Um, all right, so that's the basics. Um, and now let's move to the part where I explain how to attack the Khan camp because this is, of course, crucial part of the event. So uh, you need to make a sponge first and uh, remember that this is the difficulty level version of the event so it will scale to your account. So for example, if I have uh, temporary items for more uh, units on the wall um, at the moment, as you can see, there is very high number of, um, of units on the wall, like 732, so it's a lot. And basically the Khan camp uh, defensive setup will not change, it only changes when the level is uh, is changed. When, so when you get higher level of Khan, Khan camp, uh, this setup will change. So how to attack? Basically, this works same as the Nomad camp. Um, you have to take a look at the ranged soldiers defense and attack with uh, ranged together with shields. You can use auto, mm, you know, auto apply, auto fill. Uh, it will add enough shields but if you don't want to use the nomad shields for example you can just take a look at the number and put the uh, equivalent of this using the uh, different shields you know as you wish but basically you need to um, to reduct this number of uh, ranged defense in the middle for example we have very little number of um, of melee attackers and high number of 
range uh, defenders, sorry, and high number of range defenders. So the auto um, put their melee to fight with this, um, you know, higher number of ranged. That's also good for us. We can actually remove this. But you need to take a look every time you attack um, if this setup hasn't changed and basically to, to make a good uh, preset there. And in the, in the following waves, you can add, for example, uh, you know, any units you want, but um, have in mind that there is a lot of um, defenders in the courtyard, as you saw. In my example, there is um, 10,000 defenders, and this is pretty strong uh, units. So more waves are useful, but not required, but useful on the higher difficulty levels. So from expert to higher, expert, expert plus, master and arc master, it will be useful to have some waves and to have some combat items to not lose like 400 attackers every attack you make on this. And here we can add um, rage point bonus tools. So we have range, uh, rage banner and plunderer's chest. Uh, so those two items, as you can see, add you 1% per one tool used to the rage points earned in the attack. Uh, and you can buy them at the Master Blacksmith for silver pieces. You can buy 1,100 every week of those um, tools. So this is not a lot, um, taking in, par in consideration that you need many of them to, to get more rage because it's only 1% and the number of rage per one attack is very little. Basically, um, to get, um, you know, full, like to be able to provoke this attack on you, um, you need to first make um, approximately 10 attacks on the Khan camp to get enough rage uh, without any tools. Yeah, if you use some tools, then it's okay. Um, and you, and it, it will be lower number, yeah. I will talk about like more advanced strategy, strategy with this uh, later, but first let's give it a try. So maybe let's uh, do it this way. Um, I will apply this to all the ways all the waves and this to the first wave and I will send the first attack without any tools increasing the number of rage points and after this attack I will send the second attack this is actually without waves that's okay um, but I will send just a few rage tools all right to just show you it's gonna be around plus yeah around plus hundred percent so it should be twice as much and let's see the results of this attacks in a second all right, so as you can see, my first attack went in and we have to skip the time. So as I said, the first few time skips will be pretty short, but the following ones will be longer and it will, you know, um, it will be longer every next attack you make. So you will see that there was 20 minutes and in the next attack it will be more. And it's actually interesting how many casualties I will get there, how many units I will lose there, because I only sent the Nomad units against 11,000 um, strong defenders, but I, I won. That's the good point. So as you can see, the time increased from uh, 20 to 30 minutes there. All right. And let's take a look at those reports. So the first report was without any tools increasing the number of rage. And as you can see already, um, with the wave item, I lost nearly 400 attackers. Just to mention, my difficulty level is expert. So this is the seven, seventh uh, difficulty level and as you can see my account has uh, some might points 12 million so uh, it also makes a um, difference um, like based on your based on your might points and based on your legendary level you will have more or less troops in the Khan camp and more or less troops um, in the attack of Khan camp yeah uh, when Khan attacks you it will depend on those two parameters so as you can see here and we've got 345 rage points mm, okay and also to mention that you will loot a plenty of legendary resources there um, all right and what next uh, here we have 752 casualties actually um, yeah against 10,000 defenders in the in the courtyard still I think it's a pretty decent score we really. If you take a look, all right, this Castellan isn't the, the best, the Nomad Castellan, yeah. But um, taking into consideration it's only Nomad units, then it's it's all right. Okay, so uh, we've got twice as much um, rage points. We've got 700 instead of 350. Um, okay, so as you can see, the rage tools are working, and here 
Uh, can we? No, we can't uh, provoke the attack yet, so I'll make one more attack, all right, without any tools. And it should um, already be enough to provoke the attack and show you how to defend. So here we go, uh, we've got enough rage points by attacking the Khan camp to actually provoke the attack on my castle. So here you have this button trigger an attack on your castle, you can either click it here in the um, in event overview. Uh, and you can also check this box to allow other members of your alliance to see this attack. So basically, like um, by default, this is unchecked. But if you want to, for example, show your alliance mates that you are um, actively taking part in it, you maybe encourage them to send more defenders to you because defenders are very um, required there in the event. Uh, so you can show it to them to you know let them know that you are taking part in it and you will maybe need some defenders. And you can also show it as your activity, that you are active to the Alliance. But by default it is unchecked because it uh, may also trigger a false alarm that your Alliance is under attack by some other Alliance. So basically I would suggest to hide it from your Alliance mates. Unless you want to show that you are engaged in the, in the event or something, as I said. Uh, so yeah, other words, taunt the Khan. So basically we were taunting him uh, to attack on our castle. Let's do this. So you click here and you will soon see the horn. All right, nine minutes is the default attack time, but it may be four minutes to 13 minutes, between 13 and four, uh, depending on your difficulty level. And actually I, I, I haven't, um, you know, sorted out what, you know, what is it dependent on that you get four minutes of the attack or 13, because people with um, similar or the same difficulty levels uh, sometimes get four, sometimes nine, and sometimes 13 minutes. Hard to tell. But basically, let's take a look at the attack here. And as you can see, it's 19,560 uh, attackers in here. And what we have there, uh, as you can see, the units there uh, have different levels. So as you take a look, level six, for example, melee attacker has 255 attack power. Level four is already half the way down, 169, and this third level is um, lower as well. So as you can see there, for example, ranged attackers are very weak there. So actually, uh, we will have to face the melee uh, attackers more, so we will try to defend with melee. But um, yeah, taking a look at the front, there is just a little more units in the front than in the flanks. But um, first of all, I will show you the four defensive setups you can use in the Khan event. So the first one is for <clears throat> is for lower difficulty levels to just make it easy. Um, you are defending by the front, so 100% um, you know, units on the front. Um, and you are using uh, 90, 90 something to 100% ranged. Um, yeah, so that's the setup. You will add the um, arrow slits there. Uh, port cool is there for your gate and of course fire mode. You can use um, the swamp snappers if you want, the alligators if you don't have very high difficulty levels. <coughs> Basically uh, up to hard difficulty level you can go with non-ruby tools. So if you are on hard difficulty level or maybe hard plus you can go with the nomad tools, N not a problem. Yeah, You can use the alligators here if you want, not a problem. It will make only slight difference in the casualties there. But if you are on um, hard plus or higher, uh, it will be very important to use Ruby tools basically. So as you can see there, yep, we're changing to Ruby tools again. All right, so this is the first setup basically. So you're attacking, uh, you're defending with front with arranged units. Second setup will be uh, on bombs, on the bombs. So you can use these bombs or these tools for the lower difficult levels or black bombs uh, for higher difficulty levels, but I must say there that it's kind of waste of the tool. So some players defend on this kind of uh, setup. The other way you can do this is to, to add um, murder holes instead of this and defend like this. Of course, you need to distribute your melee like 80 something percent. And this is the other way you can defend on lower difficulty levels because defending uh, on expert, for example, it might be difficult to defend by the front so you'll uh, either have to try on the flank. All right, so the other uh, way 
you can use and this way will be useful on higher difficult level but with a lot of soldiers on the wall like 2000 and more uh, you can defend by two flanks 50% each so let me yeah set it to 50% right and 50 left and you have to add your arrow slits there to both sides and of course distribute 100% ranged on those sides mm, remember about the fire mode and this is the other way you can try to defend uh, I don't think I will go for this because uh, we have a lot of strong uh, melee attackers <coughs> and only a few uh, weak actually very weak um, ranged attackers so I will try with melee but I have mm, close to 1800 defenders on the wall there so I might try uh, either front or one flank I will go safe with one flank but my uh, best tip there will be to try every def every defensive setup, uh, one setup per one attack basically, and just check which setup um, is the best for your difficulty level for the attacks you are getting because every player will get a slightly different attacks from the camp. So you just have to check uh, what will be the best for you there. I will go, I think, with uh, one murder hole and three uh, quick line bombs. Let's give it a try on this flank. Okay. Yep, and go with 80, 88. Might be okay. All right, so that's the units we have on the wall. Level four mid um, melee and level five mid ranged. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Of course, fire mode. Um, all right, and what else do we need to remember about? There are many other things to remember about. The first thing is the cast land. So basically when you are on hard, hard plus, it's all right to, to skip the cast land. But if you are on expert like me or higher, it's crucial to have NPC cast land. So basically here where you have this um, NPC uh, thing, so you ha have to, you need to have those items with NPC bonuses instead of castle lords bonuses so where you have here uh, strength when defending against castle lords it should be against npc so you can just swap this uh, my recommendation would be to keep the npc castle at the uh, storm event it is the easiest to, to swap it like this so as you can see i can very quickly uh sorry very quickly change those items remember about the hero hero should also have npc bonuses and mostly uh, strength when defending main castle and townships. This is very very important. Wall protection mod protection very useful too. All right, we've got 240 on the counter to uh, left. Uh, okay, so this won't show you soldiers on the wall uh, from the NPC castle because it like doesn't count NPC in this in this place. But you will have a slightly more uh, with the bonus of the castle than it shows here. All right, so the next things to remember about. But, yeah, units on the wall. Uh, if you're going with higher difficult levels, you need to have a lot of them. On hard, at least 1000. Hard plus 1500. Expert 1750 or even 2000. And on the highest difficult level, 2500 would be good to have. Um, so, what you can do, the first thing is the keep wall item. So, the keep uh, construction item for more units on the wall. Mm. And this is, uh, of course, the permanent item. Other items will be the temporary item for um, barracks. You can get it in Master Blacksmith. Uh, you can buy it. And the other one will be for the um, floor mill. So you can actually buy this item for 10,000 10, Nomad Tabs and increase its strength by using upgraders here. Uh, all right, and the other thing to remember about is strength in the courtyard. So appearance slot for stables there. And it's very good to have this item here. I will actually apply it. All right, so we are now good to go. And the last thing uh, which I need to mention to you is to uh, send out your mm, attackers, basically. So you should have a player, uh, a bird player in your um, alliance. Actually, the bird was ended. So <laughs> you need to, to send those units out. You can leave a few thousand for uh, attacking the Khan camp, but you, sh you should send out most of them you can send them to your outpost or something as you wish uh, but basically send those troops out to uh, you know because if you if you would leave attacker troops uh, you would just waste them in the defense of the courtyard and that would be just a waste of 
attacker troops. So don't do that. Uh, and remember, the more uh, troops in the courtyard, the less your uh, loses. So you should encourage your alliance if you are making many attacks. Yes? Right now, I'm making only one attack on me to show it as an example for you. But if, if you are making many attacks on you, you should send a mass message to your alliance that you are attacking Khan and you are asking um, for defenders to just lower your casualties. This is normal in all alliances, we just support players with uh, defenders for the Khan camp, yeah? All right, so let's take a look at the battle report, approximately 2,000 casualties, yeah, 1,900. So let's see if I kept the wall, yeah, very easily. Um, and as you can see, this number is higher than 1,500 shown in the defensive window um, because it, it didn't uh, actually take um, NPC ca uh, castle in the consideration. But yeah, the flank was held here very easily. Uh, we've got 0% on the courtyard. And as you can see there, there was many casualties, actually one and a, one and a half thousand because there wasn't many defenders uh, on higher difficulty levels. I really, um, you really should have um, more defenders, like one million, one and a half million, as I showed you in previous uh, battle reports. I mean, this was on hard plus, okay? So, I mean, it was actually lower, should be 100 in some, yeah, this is the, the exact report. So as you can see there, it was way less uh, casualties in the courtyard because there was two million basically, yeah? And this was actually <laughs> easier difficulty level, so it was uh, defended with ranged units with arrow slits. Mm, all right, and the courtyard. All right, so one more thing which I need to mention in terms of defending the Khan attacks is uh, that you need to, you, you can use um, tools which increase the number of Khan medals earned. So we have this Balistraria, uh, we have Nomadic Murder Hole, which also increases 3% per one tool used in the defense. Uh, so this is the, like this is the same thing as murder hole, but with bonus. And this is the same thing as arrow slit, but with the bonus. Uh, and that's all actually, we have two of them. So you can use those instead of arrow slits to get more medals and per one tool used, you will gain 3% boost. Uh, so if you, for example, use four of them and you have eight waves of the attack, you use four tools in eight waves. So you use in total uh, 32 tools uh, and each of them had 3%, so it's gonna be 96% boost. So that's actually pretty high boost there to get more of those uh, medals. And one more thing, you can also put the uh, planter's trunks in your uh, courtyard, but it, it's very expensive to get them, so I wouldn't recommend using them. And the bonus is, you know, not too great. You're, you're gonna get only 21% bonus if you put three of them in the courtyard slots here but uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this, it's, it's too expensive. Of course, if you've got some uh, your, you know, in your storage, uh, yeah, use them, make a use for them, but if you don't have them, just uh, don't buy them, it's, it's not worth it. All right, so I think that's all about the defense. Yeah, uh, oh, and one more thing, uh, it's very good to get appearance item for your castle, so let me search for it if I have best seller, yeah. Uh, it should be in the best seller with the decorations, right, this one. So for example, one good item you can get, but only if you are making a lot of uh, provokes on you and a lot of defensive uh, defense there, uh, you can buy this item which increases 20% combat strength for all units in main castle and 20% unit limit on the castle wall. Uh, but this I would recommend only for expert and higher. All right, so now let's maybe move to to the um, like more advanced strategy of doing this event. So this will be uh, looping or making a chain attack on you from the can, uh, camp, basically. So this is um, how this works, basically. I will show you an example uh, from other video, which will, will be linked in the video description. Uh, but basically I will also show it on live stream maybe in a few weeks, which where I will uh, buy a booster. So th to make this thing work, you need to have a booster. Uh, you can buy the booster for money. So this is only for like spenders. You can make a little spend here because you can start with, um, I have uh, my currency basically, but this is $5. So the smallest pack, a small Nomad Armory or medium Nomad Armory is what you will need to have. If you have Khan Camp 
level 120, uh, you can go with this one. If you have lower, you should go with this one. Yeah. So five dollars, ten dollars, basically in in approximation. Yeah. Uh, I will also show you a nice table later at the end, which um, like summarizes all those all, all those things. All right. So uh, you, as you can see here, you're getting rage banner, uh, rage booster, fifty percent for or four hours, or seventy five percent for six hours, and this will increase the rage points. Uh, earned when defending. So basically, as you can see there, in my defense, I got 2,415 rage points, but to provoke the attack on me, I need to have 3,300 rage, yes? So I would have to get half more uh, than I got from this battle report to actually be able to taunt attack again after just defending the attack. So uh, chain attacking, as you may already, um, you know, guessed, is um, provoking a lot of attacks at the same time on you. So basically what you do is uh, you make a lot of attacks on the Khan camp. Um, so you basically make a train attack on the Khan camp and you taunt the attacks one after each other. So you're trying to taunt as many attacks from the Khan camp as you can at the same time. So trying to, for example, get 10 or 15 or 20 horns on you from the Khan camp. And at the moment when they start actually uh, getting on your to your castle, you need to go to your castle and just you, you will get rage points for the defense itself enough to make another taunt from the Khan camp because you have the booster, yeah. Because if you wouldn't have the booster, you wouldn't be able to get enough rage for just defending to make a taunt again to pay, provoke an attack again. But if you have this <coughs> uh, this booster, fifty percent, you can see you we would uh, get plus half of this, so we would get 3,600 actually there, and it would allow me to provoke the attack on me again, uh, so I would be able to, you know, loop them, so um, the attacks come on you, and as soon as the attack hits your castle, you get the rage points required to provoke the attack on you, uh, and you provoke it, so you get the next attack for free, kind of, I know, um, you're just able to provoke the next attack right after the previous hit your castle, so you can loop this process. Just to mention, if you're doing the chain attacking from the Khan camp, you need to have in mind that you need to supply tools, uh, because if you run out of tools, this will be uh, this will increase your casualties heavily. So just to have this in mind that yeah, you need to every few minutes check in and add tools. Uh, some players are able, myself, I myself did. 37 towns at the same time on me, but some players say are able to do even 40 or 40 something. So in that case, you need to supply your tools every two or three minutes. But usually if you're making only like 10 horns, for example, you need to supply tools every like five to six minutes. Just, you know, just um, um, sort out how often you need to check in and add the tools. Remember about mod tools as well, and that's it. All right, so that's the advanced strategy of chain attacking, uh, I guess. So now, um, now you need to also know about alliance boosters. So let me get into my alliance without actually showing our treasury. So here we will have a few uh, temporary upgrades from the alliance treasury. We have rage bonus for attacking Khan camp. Uh, so this will actually increase the range, the range earned for attacking. This is not increasing the amount of range you are getting for defending your castle against the castle, the, the Khan attacks. So this won't work uh, same as the paid booster from the shop. Uh, this is only for attacks. So you can increase it, it will cost you a uh, fairy, fairy Dublin uh, and you can get up to 48% more rage for attacks. It's actually good because you will have to make less attacks on the Khan camp to be able to provoke it. Mm. The second booster is attack cooldown for Khan camps. So it's not the best because you, you know you can get up to um, one third less time to skip there, but it's very expensive in terms of time doublons. It's way better to use them on the nomad camp actually. But if you want, you can activate this. You will have lower uh, cooldown on the Khan camp. And the most important bonus is defense strength bonus against Khan attacks. So this also greatly lowers the number of units you lose in your courtyard when defending against a uh, Khan camp. So this is required if many players in your uh, alliance take part in this. 
uh, you should use this. You will pay 15 Rampart doubloons for three hours of this booster, but this is very, very, very important to use it. So remember about this. And yeah, this is the, the free boosters you can uh, use to improve your um, gameplay in the con event. All right, so let's jump into it. Here we have a little bit deeper and more advanced um, analysis of the event. Keep in mind that uh, this table will be available in the video description as well. So we'll have like uh, online version of this table. So let's take a look. Uh, here we have all the difficulty levels. So easy, easy plus, intent plus, hard, hard plus, etc. Uh, and the first row shows you the size of the attack. And as I marked, marked here with one star, we can see that it depends on account might points and level uh, mostly. So here you have like range of the size it could be. So from one and a half to three and a half uh, thousand of units in this uh, difficulty level, for example. Here we have two to five, three to six, four to seven and a half. And for example, hard, which is um, recommended for free to play players for by me. Um, you can see that you can get from five to 11,000 units in the attack. And to keep in mind, medals earned are based, they depend on the size of the attack because medals are aimed kind of similar way to glory, but uh, only based on the attackers from the can lost in the battle. So if they send 5,000, you will get half as much of e as if you would get when they send 11,000 attackers, yes, because they lost twice as much units. So you get twice as much medals and that's how it works. And as you can see, the attacks get bigger and bigger on expert on my difficulty level. It was 19 and a half thousand. So you could get very, very big attacks there. Uh, expert plus 23,000 here. Uh, and on arc master above 30,000 is uh, also possible. And then waves of the attack. So this is important to keep in mind when, um, you know, adding tools, for example, when making chain attacks, if you are making chain attack uh, with seven uh, waves on hard, you will have to, you know, add tools uh, less frequently than, for example, on master where you have 11 waves of the attack. So uh, they will sweep off all your tools in just like eight attacks or something or nine attacks actually. Mm, yeah, next part is recommended units on the wall. So with those easy levels, it's lower than 1000 basically because up to intermediate plus, it's very, very easy. The attacks are weak, small, and commanders are very easy to defeat. But from hard to hard plus, you will need to increase the number of units um, fairly uh, higher. So for example, you can uh, use, as I mentioned before, the most important, which is wall capacity uh, build item there, but you can also use the temporary build items, yeah, such as uh, the barracks one or the floor mill one here to increase the number of units and also the ruby item and also the NPC uh, castellan which increases that as well. So you will have to combine all those things to get this number of units basically on the wall. Uh, and here we have the defensive setup I suggest to you. We have two different uh, setups we have uh, for unit saving and for tool saving. So for tool saving if you, for example, have only a small amount of tools, but a lot of units, it happens to some players. So you prefer to save tools instead of units a little bit. So here we have um, those defenses just with right with the definition here, as I showed you uh, in the video. So um, by the front uh, with melee, by the front with ranged or by both flanks with uh, ranged. So we have those kind of defenses. And defense for unit saving is using a little bit more tools. For example, here we are using two flanks instead of mid, uh, but it, it's also dependent actually. Sometimes it's better to defend the, the, the front instead of two flanks. So for example, on those difficulty levels, actually defending for two flanks might be a worse idea than defending just front or just one flank. So as I said before, you need to check all the possible defensive setups and pick the, the right one for you, for you because every player has different can attacks and you just need to make sure which one is the best, uh, find out which one is the best for you. Here we have average casualties, um, assuming that you have enough defenders in the courtyard and you are using mid, to, mid units. Uh, so on the lower difficulty levels, as I said, this is very little, but on higher, it gets higher, 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 as you can see there, up to 2000 on Arc Master, when you have around 3 million defenders in the courtyard because that's the number you should have when going uh, with this top 
difficulty levels basically uh, with those difficulty levels you should have from uh, you know one and a half to two million units at least in the courtyard of course including the uh, alliance support yeah uh, on hard hard plus here you can go with half a million here you should get around one million and you will be good uh, medals earned so here we can see how many medals you will earn so as i said uh, hard is recommended for free to play because the casualties are still pretty low and the number of medals is uh, already mm, fine it's fine uh, and then it gets not too much higher but the casualties get way higher and for this to compare I made the mm, kind of parameter how many medals you actually earn per one unit lost in the battle so it's basically divided uh, this number by this number yeah uh, so here we have it's very high for low difficulty levels but you're gonna you know it's gonna take you a lot of defenses to actually do it so it's not gonna be too convenient and it drops down as we go further so as you can see seven and a half five and it actually increases on hard and that's why hard is the best because as you can see it goes down 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 up and way down there so hard plus is actually not too good um and on hard you can get a lot of those medals it's pretty close to hard plus as you can see uh, casualties are uh, only half of this and you don't necessarily require like npc command castellan or the, those appearance items for rubies i mean they're not for rubies but those uh, castellan item for rubies you don't need it you can just use the item from the master blacksmith for a little bit of units on the wall and so on uh, and as you can see you can chain attack with the booster uh, very cheaply so with the cheapest booster from the shop we have uh, all right later it goes as you can see down down um yeah and it goes down but here on expert expert would be pretty good for um, pay to win to to chain attack on the higher boosters for example and expert plus master they are both also good for um, bigger players but you will have to uh, as i marked their npc castellan from hard plus to expert will be very useful to make your casualties lower but on those three difficulty levels you just have to have it uh, ruby appearance item which is uh the one i mentioned so the you know the ruby item uh where was it? not this one mm, yeah this item which increases the strength of units and which increases the units limit on the wall so this one mm. Yeah, it will be useful there and it, is, it will be required on those last three so if you want to go big you can go big with those levels uh, for pay to win uh, players actually there uh, and here i marked uh, how much of a booster you need to have when your camp is level 120 so when your your Khan camp is actually maximum level uh, how much of a booster to rage points you need to have and you can actually make this cal calculation or you on your own uh, it's very easy so you just take a look at the number of rage points you get per one defense here it is um, 2415 and how much you need to have um, to taunt the attack actually uh, so let's calculate it so you just divide it make an equation there 3300 per 2415 uh, and as we only want to have the booster number uh, let's make minus one and this is the the score let's make it percentage yes 37 percent is the booster amount you need to taunt the attack to to make the chain attacking so uh, every next attack you 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 defend will earn you enough rage points to taunt another attack from those defense yeah so you can calculate this very easily you just di uh, divide the uh, bigger number by the lower number so number of required per number of earns by the defense uh, and you'll calculate easily how much you um, sorry how much you need uh, of a booster to to make the chain attacking all right and now quickly let's go to the most important part i would say the Khan medal merchant so what you should buy there and what you should get for those medals you earned hardly uh, so the number one thing to do here is to buy decorations here you have 10 decorations uh, of each type so we have actually 30 of them we have 10 warrior eagle uh, 10 saga of the terror and 10 terracotta soldiers uh, each giving you three and a half thousand public order so i might call it um, very um, 
bravely that this is the new meta we have in the game, earning Khan medals and buying those decorations. Because before you would have to, you know, make some crazy scores or make like top to get those kind of decoration, one decoration, yeah? Or make, you know, this number of points, for example. But here you can just for 30,000 medals get one and you can get 30 per event or not actually 30, 60. You can get 60 per event because you can get 10 of each, as you can see there, also 10. It's sold out, I bought already, yeah, but you can get 10 of this uh, as well, three and a half, and here, three and a half. Uh, and those uh, buying limits will reset on the last day, uh, it should be Monday, um, um, at 12 a.m. in the CEST time, Central European time, where, you know, uh, it should be at the same time when your Kingdom League resets on the last day of the Nomad Invasion. This limit will reset actually and you will be able to purchase against, uh, again uh, 30 more. So uh, you can buy. Other things to buy there are uh, food production items but the only one would be the 25 for 50,000. It's allowed, I bought it already. But it costs 50,000 medals for the level 25. Uh, those both there are too expensive, I would say. I wouldn't recommend them. Um, yeah, storage item, mm, maybe one, but it's way overpriced, so I wouldn't recommend this too. And decoration catalysts are just a waste of the medals. Yeah, uh, another thing to, to buy there is um, a little decoration. So this decoration is half, as, half the size of the usual decoration and half the public order and half the price. So you can also buy 10 of them and it's very good to fit, for example, if you have a hole in your castle which size is just half of decoration, you can buy this to fit the hole. And the same way this decoration works, this is 3x3 three three squares uh, and it gives the same number of public decoration per area used in the castle when you calculate that and it costs you a little bit less, it costs I believe 6000 medals and you can also buy 10. So it's very useful, for example, if you have three um, of your districts, you can put it here in this space which everyone has uh, after having three districts actually there. Yep, so that's the way to, to use it, to just uh, put it in this free space there. All right, so I think that's everything you need to know about the Khan invasion. I'm very sure that it took so long for me to actually create this video. I wanted to prepare very well, especially with this table, which you will be able to see um, in the um, video description we will have a link to this table uh, to, to check it out later on or to send it to your alliance members for example and yeah this video is pretty long like 50 over 50 minutes so also sorry for this but this is kind of my way of creating guides you need to you know get into the topic and just listen about everything to, to actually have the full uh, perception of how the event works you know so very sorry that this video is pretty long. I'm not gonna uh, make it even longer. So thank you very much for watching. You can rate the video with thumbs up or thumbs down depending on your thoughts on the video. You can also share them in the comment section. I would be very glad for this to, to for, from you. And see you in the next one. Bye.